I'm a mom and a parent coach. I spend a lot of time helping parents navigate the ins and outs of raising children and the struggles and frustrations inherent in that process. How did I get here? It's been a journey. Over 24 years ago, I held my first son in my arms, and I marveled at his perfection. Those 10 tiny fingers and toes, that blonde hair, those blue eyes. OK, he wasn't exactly the mini me I was expecting. <laughs> I was full of love and gratitude, but I was also overwhelmed. I spent those first three days in the hospital recovering from a C-section delivery trying to learn to nurse my son when my milk hadn't yet come in. And the nurse came into my room and told me it was time to go home. We were being discharged. I hadn't changed a single diaper. Who thought this through? Why would anyone send this helpless newborn home with me? Those first months were overwhelming and frustrating, which is how most new parents feel. I was exhausted and unsure. The diaper rash looked bad, but did it warrant a trip to the doctor? Nursing required three pillows and another adult. <laughs> I struggled to swaddle Oliver correctly, and he often resembled a messy burrito. And it was a great day if I could stay in the shower long enough to rinse the shampoo out of my hair before he started to cry. But I knew, as we all do, that this parenting gig is important, and the outcomes mattered. I spent time considering what kind of children did I want to raise? What were my values? And how did the decisions I made reflect those values? You would think that all parents consider their values and the outcomes that they desire. That as moms and dads, we imagine the kinds of children we want to raise. Many moms and dads spend a lot of time carefully constructing a birth plan, but it ends with delivery. We think about our unborn child perhaps as in terms of a fantasy about completing our family or raising the next elite athlete or Supreme Court justice. But do we consider the infinite number of steps needed to get them there, or anywhere for that matter? In my practice, I've learned that parents are often reactive. We tend to mimic or reject our own parenting depending on whether or not we thought our parents did a good job with us. But I knew I wanted to parent with kavanah, with intention. Now, kavanah is an important Jewish construct. It's central to how we think about mitzvot and tefillah. Certain prayers, like the Shema, the Shema, don't even count without intention. We learn that intention isn't just nice, it's essential. And I believe that intention is essential to parenting, too. After all, what's more holy than raising little Jewish children? I'm not a rabbi or a Torah scholar, but my life has been enriched by our tradition, and so has my parenting. For me, being Jewish is all about challenging and questioning. Consider our Talmud. It's made up of the Mishnah, the laws, and the Gemara, the discussion. And every page of Talmud is the method by which our ancestors engaged in discourse. Here's the rule. That's not always what happens in real life. So here's the discussion. Well, my style of parenting is like a page of Gemara. I establish my rules and my laws. And they get narrated and challenged and revisited. Only in my house, it's not Rabbi Akiva and Hillel. It's Rabbi Oliver and Rabbi Kaylee and Rabbi Quincy. But I'm not suggesting that anyone should parent like I do. Rather, I'm proposing that intentional parenting allows us all to figure out our own right way, informed by our values. As a new parent, I was focused on keeping my children alive. I wasn't confident and clear like I am today, mostly. But as I reflect back, I appreciate the fundamental ways in which our tradition affected my approach. I understood my laws, my goals, and I tethered the outcomes I desired to those goals. I wanted my children to be compassionate and resilient and good. 
I wasn't so interested in the what they would be. I was focused on the who they would be. And that's how I considered my values. And knowing my values anchored me as I made parenting decisions. And that made me more nimble as I navigated the many zigs and zags on the parenting path. In my practice, I've learned that if you aren't grounded in your values, you become a reactive parent whose choices reflect the mood of the moment. And this makes young children anxious and confused because they look to their parents to provide consistency and containment. And this makes older children defiant because they can't predict or plan, so they challenge. And it makes parents anxious and confused because they have to face every parenting decision as a new and discrete problem with no template or blueprint to refer to. For me, knowing my values was that blueprint, was that template. But as any builder will tell you, having a blueprint isn't enough. There's always an unforeseen circumstance or a new challenge, like a new developmental milestone or a new baby. And that's when I learned that parenting with kavana, with intention, mattered for another reason. And it lies in the meaning of the word. Kavana means to take aim, like an archery. Consider the archer's stance. OK, use your imagination. I've never actually held a bow. <laughs> Consider the archer's stance. The feet are grounded, letting the upper body do the work and take aim. Well, being grounded in parenting is the same. If we're grounded in our values, it allows us to do something critically important. It allows us to pivot. And pivoting is essential to parenting because there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Now, you might think that consistency matters in parenting, that you should know your rules and stick to them. I confront this in my practice all the time. Parents tell me, I can't make curfew earlier. I can't take away their phone. I can't change a house rule. But I always push back. Pivoting is a sign of strength. And when we recognize that pivoting is a sign of strength, it allows us to navigate those situations that aren't working. It allows us to say, this isn't working. Now, pivoting has deep roots in Judaism. Let's look to Genesis. An angry God floods the earth, destroying everything except for Noah, his ark of creatures. When the water subsides and the creatures are released onto the land, God says, never again shall I doom the earth. I will maintain my covenant with you, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. This isn't working. Now, God was not my client, so maybe she wasn't <laughs> thinking intentionally that this isn't working. But she did know that destroying the world as a consequence for man's infractions wasn't a good plan. This isn't working, and God pivots. Look to Exodus, when an angry God wants to destroy the Israelites in the desert, and Moses implores God, let not your anger blaze forth against your people whom you freed from the land of Egypt. Now, man's behavior in the desert was erratic and annoying. Anyone have a toddler <laughs> or a teenager? Man is no more immune than God when it comes to reacting badly. This isn't working, and God pivots. Even the almighty God learns to pivot. There is no entrance exam in parenting. There is no test prep. We enter into the role naive and excited, overjoyed and overwhelmed. We are all uniquely ill-prepared for this truly important job. What I have learned in my life as a mom and as a parent coach is that we can all choose to parent with intention, to parent with kavanah, to be grounded in our core values, whatever they may be, so that we can pivot when challenges arise, which they will. And if we can learn to do this, we will find the job more rewarding and less stressful, and we will raise some pretty great people too. Thank you.